evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, as filming begins on the latest instalment of the Mission Impossible franchise, Tom Cruise continues to insist on doing all his own stunts. <laughs> At 800 feet, a conceptual artist tries to capture the fear of falling in a work called What's Happening in My Trousers. <laughs> and at the Dorchester Hotel, following a night of high jinks, one man gets up early and retraces his steps to see if he can find the key to his handcuffs. <laughs> On Ian Steam tonight is a comedian and actor who was born in the 90s under a Conservative government beset by sleaze, sex scandals and cash for questions roused. The bad old days, eh? Please welcome Manya Chihuahua. <laughs> On Paul Steam tonight is a comedian who recently revealed her favourite song is Shipbuilding by Elvis Costello. For any younger viewers watching, Elvis Costello was like an 80s version of Ed Sheeran. And shipbuilding was like the 80s version of making TikToks. Please welcome <laughs> Joe Brand. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Joe, have a look at this. Yes. Oh, yes, the best Prime Minister we never had. <laughs> Liz Truss, obviously, has brought a book out. Uh, Nigel Farage, this is a meeting in Belgium. Oh, there's a smoking ban coming in for people who are now about 14 years old, won't be able to buy cigarettes. That's exactly right. Anyone born after 2009. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many Conservatives rebelled against... 69. Smoking ban? 57, was it? 41. Well... <laughs> <Three>. Bingo! <laughs> 165 in total either voted against or abstained. And several of these MPs have been shown to have direct or indirect connections to tobacco lobbyists or the tobacco interest oh. itself. Oh. oh, really, Alexander? He shouldn't have mentioned that, should he? He shouldn't, shouldn't have, have done. Mentioned that. How many of them dislike having a fag? <laughs> Mostly the ones who went to Eton. <laughs> what are some of the arguments against the smoking ban? One problem is going to be, isn't it, when those what are kids now get older. Yeah. And like one who's 45 can't smoke and his 46 year old this is twin exact... brother or not quite. <laughs> Former Conservative Health Secretary Sir Kenneth Clark, later a director of uh, British American Tobacco, yeah. argued that in years to come you'd have the possibility of a 43 year old man being able to buy cigarettes and a 42 year old man being prevented from doing so. Oh, did Kenneth Clark say that? Yeah. Oh, I don't agree with it then. <laughs> It's a big public health debate, yes. you know, the banning of smoking. And on the one hand, you have Liz Truss, who's against it. On the other hand, you have Chris Whitty. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know who to believe. Um, what do you believe, Ian? I believe they've identified something that could make health a lot better and a lot cheaper. Mm. And Rishi Sunak's trying to do something about it. And, you know, this really hurts being pleasant about the Prime Minister. <laughs> You've no idea. Um, <laughs> but I think it might be a good idea. And the rebellion was led by people who want to be Prime Minister. Kemi Badenoch, Penny Mordaunt. Mm. Kemi Badenoch, I think she was the only cabinet minister to rebel against it. So she was saying that she agrees with it in principle, but she doesn't like the execution. And I think the phrase she said was, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I feel like we should trust her, because she travels down it to get to work <laughs> every day. <laughs> But a lot of things that are quite fun are also bad for our health. Yeah, heroin. Yeah. <laughs> Seatbelts in cars. Yes. Big fuss about that at the time. That was an infringement of civil liberties to have a seatbelt in a car. Which individual thought car seats in cars shouldn't be allowed? Car seats? Oh, babies. Children car seats. Oh, I see. Was um, it Rishi Sunak because he felt patronised? <laughs> How long ago was it? In 2006. It was Boris Johnson, but then he didn't have so many children. <laughs> <laughs> the new smoking bill will also tackle vapes. Uh, what are the plans for vapes? Is it like to ban disposable vapes? Yes, but also vape flavours will be restricted in order to make them less attractive to children. Broccoli or anchovy flavour. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add watermelon to that as well? Oh. My daughter made me try it and it was... Well, it was fruit, wasn't it? it? Made me feel sick. Oh. <laughs> Staying with health, what yes. did staff at the Royal Stoke Hospital do this week? 
The answer is we don't know. Yes, they made a banner declaring that the hospital welcomes 21 different genders and sexualities. Mm, 21? There they are. Wow. I don't know some of those countries. <laughs> That's Zimbabwe at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Each of these 21 genders has its own flag, and why not? You know, now cancer's been cured and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's interesting about the Conservative MP for Fylde, Mark Menzies? Nothing. Oh. Uh, no, actually, there is, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He gets shot in a room, and he had to phone someone at 3 o'clock in the morning yeah. and say he was mm. being held by some bad men, and he needed... Was it five grand? Oh, five he needed five grand, yeah. yeah. According to the Times, the MP rang an elderly local party volunteer at 3.15am last mm. December saying he was locked in a flat and needed £5,000 as a matter of life and death. Yeah, I mean, it's a repeated pattern. And he, he really um, laid it on thick. He said it was medical bills and he had no idea that, you know, how on earth he was going to escape. And he asked for the money from local donors to be put into his own account. You know, thank goodness he wasn't fiddling his council tax for a small amount. <laughs> Then it would be a proper scandal. <laughs> Last time he was in trouble, it was for paying a Brazilian rent boy and asking him to buy drugs for him. <laughs> but it was a long time ago and no one cares. <laughs> he uh, has also been accused of deliberately getting an acquaintance's dog drunk. <laughs> uh, and... Yes. Oh, even and worse, at for music lovers, this is for Classic FM. At a last interesting. night of the proms concert yeah. featuring Catherine Jenkins. I was going to tell you this. It's not just you putting on a record and waiting for three months. I know I get <laughs> used to it. <laughs> Your grasp of modern technology is amazing. Putting on a record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, he got drunk during last night of the proms and he had to get the stewards to take him out. I mean, it's not merely poor behaviour, it was positively unpatriotic. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes! He turned up drunk and began poking people on the front row. <laughs> he denied he was drunk and said he hadn't intentionally poked anyone and may have done it by accident when waving a flag. <laughs> Since the latest claims, which he disputes, uh, Menzies has had the whip removed. <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't fancy that job. <laughs> The Tory party sat on this for three months. Yes. Yes. Not him. No. <laughs> <Just, laughs> he'd have paid good money for that. <laughs> <laughs> what was the bad news for Angela Rayner this week? The police have got involved. That's right, yeah. yes. Police have launched a formal investigation into the allegation that she has broken tax and electoral laws. Who has been re-arrested north of the border? Um, Nicola Sturgeon's husband, whose name escapes me. Peter Murrell. Peter Murrell, yes. He's... Been charged. Been charged. With embezzlement. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. He's a good guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Scottish police do something that isn't arresting people online. <laughs> <laughs> What's the government been playing with the House of Lords? Parliamentary ping pong. Rwanda ping pong. More oh, is that like French cricket? <laughs> The House of Lords has repeatedly sent back the Rwanda bill to the Commons because it rejects the government's assertion that it can simply pass a law that says Rwanda is safe. Rishi Sunak is reportedly trying to do a similar deal with Costa Rica. Oh. And, and Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> Just step into this wardrobe. <laughs> Speaking of human rights, you mentioned this earlier. Where else has freedom of speech been curtailed? Belgium! Yes, in Brussels. Brussels. Belgium has tried to shut down a European Conservatives conference. Uh, authorities in Belgium would like to see such events banned in case anything interesting happens. <laughs> it is quite funny that Nigel Farage is now complaining about not being allowed to go to Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds to me like they didn't have much to talk about, just a load of sort of Belgian waffle. <laughs> Was there a notable absentee? Liz Truss. Liz Truss, absolutely. Yep. Busy plugging her book. Yeah. Ten years to save the West. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to see her cleverly weaving this into an interview on American oh, television? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Great to see you. Um, your thoughts... Great to see you. And uh, here's my new book. I'll yeah. just get it out of the screen. There you go. expression though. Yeah. Can't <laughs> Did the 10 years start from when she became Prime Minister? <laughs> I don't think we've extracted all the fun out of this, so shall we have a Big Liz quiz? Oh yeah! Yes, yes. Big Liz quiz! <laughs> 
Okay, fingers on buzzers, because here is the first question. <clears throat> what did Liz Truss say when, on only her second day as PM, she heard about the Queen's death? Uh, yes, Ian and Munya. The Queen died and she said, why me? <laughs> it's a question we've all asked. <laughs> Absolutely right. What was the Queen's one piece of advice to Liz Truss? Was it pace yourself? <laughs> This is absolutely right. You're on fire. <laughs> well, I just find it funny that that's the exact same advice you'd give to your unemployed alcoholic uncle at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what did Liz Truss say was her biggest problem with the TV leadership debates with Rishi Sunak? <laughs> yes. No idea, but I just wanted to press my buzzer. Do you know? <laughs> um, she couldn't see him properly. He was behind a table. <laughs> her feet hurt. Oh, Ian. Ian, you don't know it, do you? Well, her biggest problem is she doesn't listen to people, which makes debate impossible. That's not what she said. <laughs> <laughs> she said yeah. she had never debated on live TV before and found it difficult to generate energy, saying, I had to be pumped up in the green room beforehand. <laughs> We just get biscuits. <laughs> we get biscuits. <laughs> what happened to the furniture that Liz ordered when she moved in at 10 Downing Street? Ian. You've been a bit obsessed with Liz Truss, haven't you? <laughs> I think you've read her book, haven't yeah. you? How dare you? <laughs> Am I right? You might be. Yeah. <laughs> she ordered a load of furniture, but she didn't last long enough as PM for it to be delivered. <laughs> Who, according to Liz Truss, was to blame for financial meltdown in 2022? Oh. The civil service, the Bank of England, everybody but her. <laughs> exactly right. Everyone yeah. except Liz. She came up with the most brilliant quote. She said, the problem for me was that there were no experts on our side. <laughs> 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 Why that would be. <laughs> actually, this quiz is lasting longer than she was actually in. Yeah. <laughs> Liz Truss has made a lot of enemies, including her own handbag. Have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm afraid that is the end of the big. Oh. Oh. Too soon. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is. Liz Truss on the comeback trail. With a general election on the horizon, Liz Truss says she hopes to remain an MP. And with a majority of 26,000, you have to say, it's touch and go. <laughs> Liz Truss described her second and final meeting with the Queen, saying there simply wasn't any sense that the end would come as quickly as it did. I know, 49 days. <laughs> Rishi Sunak's ban on cigarettes will have a profound effect on children under the age of 15, many of whom will have to give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Munya, uh, take a look at this. OK, this is his Trump at Fashion Week, 24. Um, <laughs> they're struggling to get the jewellery, and then this is Trump with the classic black power symbol for some reason. <laughs> OK, so I think he is the first former US president to be on criminal trial for allegedly playing hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels. They've been struggling to get a jury because people are struggling to be impartial towards him. That's exactly right. Absolutely unprecedented event. Yes, a former US president on trial for a criminal offence. Uh, unless he wins the election in November, and then for the first time in history, a current US president will have gone on trial for a criminal offence. What's wrong with lying? If I got the chance to go on a jury judging Trump, I would lie my head off. <laughs> to do that, because it's going to be spectacular, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Has anyone here done jury service here? No, have you? I have. I had a lovely time, actually, because I got shepherded in with about 40 people, and the accused saw me and went, I'm not having that fucking Joe Brand on my jury. <laughs> so you were excused? Yeah, the judge asked me <laughs> to well, you leave. Go. Yeah, it was a really boring trial as well, I was yeah. delighted. It was one of Ian's, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Trump is alleged to have had a relationship with another glamour model. What was she called? Liz Truss. <laughs> <laughs> Something like Stormy Daniels, so it's sort of uh, uh, Weather Woman Tempest. <laughs> <laughs> She's called Karen McDougal. 
Oh. She's a former Playboy Playmate of the Month. December 97, if memory serves. <laughs> 96 potential jurors were introduced to Donald Trump in court, and at least 50 of them then said it would be impossible to be impartial and were allowed to leave. Here's BBC's North America editor, Sarah Smith. There were quite a few testy arguments in the courtroom this afternoon as Donald Trump's lawyers objected to some of the jurors. It, uh, one man was dismissed when it turned out that he had posted on Facebook back when Donald Trump was president, get him out and lock him up. He's not on the jury. <laughs> What are the chances of Trump ending up in jail? Well, he did it, so probably quite high. <laughs> I just said that to wake the lawyer up. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it, it, you know, he's guilty, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you rephrased that. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, does it? Because he has the same support even if he's in jail, so he That's can true. just campaign in an orange suit. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> where well, we see him. <laughs> <laughs> Could someone that's actually in jail be president? You can be, yeah. In there's jail. A, there's no yeah. rule about it. Oh, you can. Yeah, they put you in the West Wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I would just like to point out that when I perhaps inadvertently suggested that he might possibly be guilty, I have no idea. <laughs> Well, let us uh, briefly turn our thoughts to the Middle East yes, and the course. potential nuclear destruction. How have events escalated? Iran is now involved. Yes. Uh, there were attempted strikes, although I think very few got through. Right, yes. but They the launched 300 missiles straight drones, into Israel. Crews and ballistic missiles. And they were all taken out, at which point the Iranians said, that's it, nothing more to see, that's the end of it. Leave us alone. <laughs> Here is how BBC Radio 2 covered the news. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner from the IDF says Israel wouldn't shy away from further confrontation. Iran has proven in what it did last night is that it continues to be a very, very substantial enemy, a very reasoned strategic orchestrator of attacks against Israel. And therefore, I, I would not say that this is game over. I would say, absolutely. That was... Uh... Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, featuring Cool and the Gang. <laughs> yes, this is the trial of former president and billionaire business mogul Donald Trump and the details of his affair with a porn star and a Playboy model. Quite spicy, but it's no Angela Rayner Council House capital gains tax scandal. <laughs> So far, the list of confirmed jurors includes an IT worker, an English teacher, a nurse, a sales professional, a software engineer, and two lawyers. Or, as they've now decided to call themselves, Team Apex. For their first task, they have two days to create and sell their own brand of vegan muffins. <laughs> Radio 2 had an embarrassing moment when they broadcast Cool and the Gang over the top of a statement from the Israeli Defense League, neatly illustrating the problem with nuclear weapons. So easy to press the wrong button. <laughs> Mm, that's linked straight to Tehran. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, and it is time for the strengthometer of news. Fingers on buzzers, teams. This is a series of barcode addresses. Uh, when you walk into a supermarket, you get... <laughs> you end up getting four packets of yoghurt. <laughs> packets of yoghurt? <laughs> Tubs, my lord. Um, <laughs> don't beg your pardon. No, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is it to do the Olympics? Yes, it's the news that we're less than 100 days away from the start of the Olympic Games in Paris. And the countdown was marked in a very dramatic ceremony in the ruins of ancient Olympia in Greece. Did anyone actually see it? Yes. How was Did it? You? It was very good. It was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can you have a quick look at some of the highlights? Yes, Fresh please. Memories. <laughs> Where does it actually film that dance from? Well, it looks like Berkshire, doesn't it? I mean, I've never seen anywhere more. Or English. It looks like a, a park outside Swindon. <laughs> <laughs> there was one hiccup with the ceremony. Does anyone know what that was? Oh, the flame wouldn't flame. <laughs>
That's right. According to The Guardian, the weather was cloudy, so the traditional method of focusing the sun's rays to light the torch didn't work, oh. and they had to use a backup flame. Well, a lighter. <laughs> One of the French dignitaries had a bag on it. <laughs> <laughs> off that. <laughs> Uh, the Olympic torch will now set off on a 10,000-mile journey through Greece, France and its overseas territories for the next three months. But what happens to the torch at night? Goes to the pub. <laughs> oh, it's guarded. Well, well, the flame must always remain alight throughout yes. the relay, so it rests in a special cauldron overnight, like Suella Braverman does. <laughs> <laughs> Well, finally, from ancient Greece to ancient Rome, yeah, uh, yes. what's been found in a hole in Italy? Oh, Pompeii. There's a, all kinds of sort of uh, wall paintings, a pizza they think they've discovered. That's right. Uh, various pictures of uh, animals and human beings. It's a great discovery. So everybody's very excited by it. And they've found two new pictures. They have. Yeah. Uh, exquisitely preserved as well. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah. We have Helen of Troy. Yeah, that yeah. dog looks a bit worried though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's got this sort of feeling that there's going to be an eruption in the volcano. <laughs> And here is uh, an Apollo mural. That's with Cassandra. Yeah. Mm. Have well. you seen my plectrum? <laughs> 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 but she turned him down. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> This is the news that the Olympic torch has been lit and will soon be making its way to France. Thousands of British policemen will travel to Paris to support the security operations surrounding the Games. It will make the streets safer for women walking around London. <laughs> A picture on a wall uncovered in Pompeii seems to depict an ancient Roman pizza. Yeah. The theory was lent weight when a papyrus delivery leaflet was also unearthed. <laughs> Headed <laughs> Dominus. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teens. That, that deserved more. I yeah. think it did. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Dominus. <laughs> Dominus. It deserved more, but that was too much. Yeah. <laughs> fingers on buzzers. Yeah. Hey. Oh. oh, yes. Ian and Munya. Apparently, Gen Z are trying to introduce anti wrinkle straws. <laughs> Gen Z, is she a popular artist? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is so that you just don't get. You don't, these treacherous muscles here that do terrible things. end up to looking our... like one of those tea towel holders. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely right. Well, let's see, look, we have a picture of a woman here. There we go, there's a Gen Z. <laughs> they force sippers to drink from the side, avoiding pursing or straining the lips and supposedly preventing perioral wrinkles. I was at school with someone called perioral wrinkle. <laughs> <laughs> He's now doing very well in the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, isn't he? <laughs> Doing very well. Aesthetic expert Dr. Daniel Hunt told The Telegraph, do I think they'll cause dramatically less of these lines in 30 years? No. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to demonstrate one. I, I have one oh, right here. Look on. at that. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. Made of glass. Yes. You look ridiculous. It's the last word in elegance. Joe, I've got one for you as well there. Fuck off. Will you have a go? <laughs> Do you want to have a go? I'll have a go, yeah. Mm. Sure. Let's, there you are. I'll have a go. One around. You do look as though you're... <laughs> the problem is the thing, actually. It's the Kia Aura that I'm not really enjoying. Straw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. This is the news that Gen Z have adopted anti-wrinkle straws in their <laughs> ongoing battle to slow down ageing. According to the Mail, to prevent wrinkle lines, Gen Z are trying not to purse their lips or frown. Although, mention J.K. Rowling and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> It can be a bit confusing identifying all these different generations. There's Gen Z, Z, Millennials, Gen X, Boomers, and then, of course, we get Ian, who I believe is Jacobean. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, and we start with... What once spent an hour and a half what? Liz Truss as Prime Minister. <laughs> Twiggy once spent an hour and a half with her arm stuck in a vending machine. In an interview this week, fashion icon Twiggy revealed she once got her arm trapped in a vending machine at Brighton train station while trying to retrieve a chocolate bar from inside. Unfortunately, we haven't got any photos of the traumatic incident because in those days, people actually gathered around to help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Twiggy said she could actually see the Twix bar she was trying to retrieve. And because skirts were so short those days, passers-by may even have caught a glimpse of Curly Whirly. <laughs> I think we've got over the last one yet. Yeah. What? Pictured looking furious after rescue by fire brigade. It's got to be a cat, isn't it? Cats sort of looking really furious. <laughs> it is cat in Lancashire. <laughs> the cat in question got stuck between two walls and had to be chiselled out by the fire brigade. Here it is after being freed. <laughs> 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 what are you expecting, Lancashire? If you want a cat with a smile on its face, everyone knows you've got to go to Cheshire. Uh, you send a mixed message when you groan and then clap. Tiny, tiny ladders, what? Infuriate firemen with big feet. <laughs> <laughs> to give evidence after Stormy Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny ladders will help dormice in Forest of Dean. Ah, oh. oh, that's nice. Here they are. There we are. According to the Times, Forestry England has built two 65-foot-long bridges, 16 feet high over a forest and supported between trees, making it the biggest piece of UK infrastructure completed under the current <laughs> government. <laughs> so the final scores are Paul and Joe on eight, Ian and Munya on nine. Yeah. Yeah. Really good yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we go, there is just time for the caption competition. All right, now, the elephant on the right has been looking, saying, OK, mate, you distract him while I kick him up the arse. <laughs> is the elephant saying, the words, have you got anything in a sandal? <laughs> <laughs> on which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Munya Chihuahua, Paul Merton and Joe Brand, and I leave you with news that... At a seniors golf competition in Florida, one contestant claims victory despite having left his golf club at home. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers of Channel 5's GP Behind Closed Doors are shocked as a man reveals his badly swollen testicle. And at a government meeting on levelling up, one minister denies a lack of focus as he finds himself thinking about the new fabric for his bedroom carpet. Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem tiêu điểm bóng đá hôm nay. Các bạn hãy ủng hộ kênh bằng cách like và subscribe cho kênh. Hẹn gặp các bạn ở các video tiếp.